Hi everyone, this is Navika Chada, a cloud engineer, Microsoft most valuable professional and a LinkedIn top voice in cloud computing. I warmly welcome each one of you to the 14th episode of Tech Chat with Navika, wherein today we would be discussing a very important topic. That is, what is platform engineering and that how does it differs from DevOps? And to help us understand that a bit more better, we have a very prominent speaker with us today, Mr. Romano Roth. Romano is a chief of DevOps, and he is an extremely, extremely experienced professional, having 20 plus years of experience in the IT industry. His area of expertise lies in platform engineering, DevOps, pipelines, software architecture, agile, and the list goes on and on. He's extremely passionate about sharing his knowledge with the tech community. And in fact, he has also been recognized as, as the global LinkedIn top voice. And congratulations for that, Romano. And thank you so much for gracing my podcast today. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Awesome. So shall we get started? Because I cannot wait to dive into this topic today. Absolutely. Let's go. Great. So off lately and nowadays, I'm actually seeing that so many businesses, actually all the businesses, they're thriving to provide the most efficient solution to their customers, right? And I feel in order to execute that, it is important to have certain amount of well-structured architecture in place, which provides a platform to the software developers wherein they can expedite the delivery of their applications with utmost efficiency. And as we talk about that, that is where platform engineering in a way comes into the picture. And that is exactly what we would be discussing in today's episode. So to start with, um, Romano, can you just give an explanation as to what is platform engineering all about? Absolutely. When you look at platform engineering, then you also need to, to talk about the platform engineering team. And what the platform engineering team is doing, they provide a platform to the other teams which are creating products. So they are creating a product for the other teams. And the, the, um, the, the topic of that product is to accelerate these teams. So that product should have everything in there which the teams need to develop their products. So it is sort of an enablement that they are doing to the product teams. So when we look at now at platform engineering, then this is the enablement of other teams so that they can deliver value faster to the clients. And when we look at that, then the platform engineering team together with the platform that they are providing as a product or as a service to the teams, they are generating value for the product teams. And the product teams themselves, which use that platform, they are generating value for the client. And this is the whole topic of platform engineering. And the reason why many companies are going into this direction is because the cognitive load was rising on the, the, the teams, on the product teams. They needed to do quite a lot of things with all of the technology, all of what they needed to understand. And the cognitive load was too high. And also there was a lot of redundancies in there. There was a lot of complexity in there. And this is something that gets reduced with platform engineering or with a platform. Right. Thank you for the explanation. And I actually agree. It's, it's, like, it's like platform engineering in place. It sort of helps both the categories. One is the internal team, that is the software developers, which sort of, you know, it increases their efficiency of work in a way with, with the help of the automated stuff that is put in. And then it also helps the clients or, you know, the users in a way or the organizations wherein they're getting consistent and, you know, much more efficient work. So it's like a win-win situation on both the sides, as you just, Absolutely. you know, even mentioned in your answer. And uh, this actually covers one more uh, yeah, so also covers one more question 
itself that is why one should actually go in for platform engineering right um um in continuation to this question uh what do you think should be the capabilities or the specific things in a way that an engineering platform should cater to right i completely mm -hmm. understand that um this is something very subjective and it depends from you know the needs and requirements from company to company but still if you would like to throw some light on this yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to say, to say it depends <laughs> because that's the answer to everything. No, I when we look uh, when we look at that, then you need uh, you need to look at the teams. And as I I pictured that, um, you have these teams that are working on products, and you need to understand because they are now the customer of the platform engineering team. And so the platform engineering team needs to understand what do they need to have in order to create their products. So generically speaking, um, you can clearly see that um, when you want to have such a platform, you need to have something like application runtime. So where your application can run. That can be, of course, on-premise, but it can also be sort of in the cloud. It can be um, sort of a Docker environment or virtual machines. It, it can, of course, also be a Kubernetes cluster. But you want to provide such an application runtime for them. Then what you also want to do is you want to um, do a lot with automation in there. So you want to automate quite a lot of things so that the development team does not need to do that. For example, um, exchanging the certification or um, changing the passwords and such things, you want to automate that. Even mm -hmm. um, when it comes to vulnerability management, so the whole DevSecOps part, like container mm -hmm. scanning, like mm -hmm. um, the um, SAST or dust. You want to incorporate sort of automation so that they don't need to do that anymore. Also, um, when it comes to observability, like um, having default dashboards or mm. having sort of tracing already in place so that the teams don't need to always do that is quite a nice thing. And of course, having provided or provide them with a pipeline, which is already mm. there, where they can build their products, where they perhaps have also some defaults, which they can already use. That's absolutely mm. what, um, what, what we see um, in mm. platform engineering and or what also many of the platforms are covering nowadays. Correct, correct. And I think um, like, Engineering platforms are mostly about the reusable tasks, right? Something that we do it on a regular interval. So in order to just put that in place so that we don't have to start everything right from scratch manually, uh, that's what it actually caters to. It's like a solution to that, right? Yeah. If I'm not wrong. Absolutely. It, it is a standardization, what you are doing. Mm. You're standardizing mm. sort of the product development mm. in, in, in a company. You, you're giving them sort of... The, the golden path um, in, a, in a company so that they don't need to reinvent the wheel. Of course, um, you ne always need to pay close attention that you don't uh, restrain them. Um, you need to give them the freedom that they can also break out and do their own stuff if they, mm -hmm. if they need to do that. Mm -hmm. But for, let's say, for 80%, it must be the right solution to have that platform and to use that platform. Correct. That is right. Um, as we're talking about platform engineering, um, it is always very closely related with DevOps, right? As we're also talking about automation, as soon as we talk about automation, it is CICD that comes into our mind, right? Um, and uh, people really relate DevOps and uh, platform engineering closely to each other. And there is always also a lot of <coughs> there's also a lot of buzz that soon in the near future maybe platform engineering can sort of replace devops uh, but i would love to hear your insights on that and yeah. as an additional question to that um if it is not replacing devops then what is the difference between platform engineering and devops um 
And are, are there any areas wherein they overlap each other? Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, but as you, as you said, there is a lot of buzz out there. But you also need to see there um, there is a lot of, um, let's say, people out there which uh, just create blog posts or memes to, to, to get, get some clicks. So it's click byte. Um, in the end, when you, when you look at the whole DevOps movement, then mm -hmm. the DevOps movement started by combining development and operation. And then it soon went into the direction of continuously delivering value. And when you want to continuously deliver value, you need to incorporate all of the people. Then the whole um, from project to product started. And we, we are nowadays more and more creating products and incorporating all of the people that are working on a product across the value stream. And this mm -hmm. is sort of what we are doing when we are doing DevOps. But this comes, of course, uh, with a price because you need to remove now some of the silos, which mm -hmm. means um, you cannot have any more these centralized positions uh, where you have the database administrator or the network mm -hmm. uh, person uh, out there. You need to have all of the people in your value stream. And now what happened is, as I said, the cognitive load was rising and many mm -hmm. people were saying, hey, um, we cannot develop any more features because we need to care about other things. Okay. And that was the starting point of platform engineering uh, when platform engineering sort of was born because of that mm -hmm. cognitive load. So mm -hmm. when you look at it from that perspective, then a platform engineering team or a platform um, enables the teams to do DevOps. And building the platform, for building the platform, you will also use DevOps. So the platform engineering team uses DevOps and also the product teams are using mm -hmm. DevOps. So therefore, DevOps is not dead. It is still there. Mm -hmm. It's just a fix. Um, to the cognitive load that mm -hmm. was uh, coming up for the product teams. Got it, got it. And um, is there any era where they sort of overlap each other, DevOps and platform engineering, like certain areas, do you think? I mean, um, I, I would uh, move it in, in that way um, that platform engine of course they they sort of have a, an overlap um, but I would say it in that way platform engineering enables other people or uh, which are working on products to do DevOps so it's more of an enabler to do exactly that that DevOps right. um, in my opinion platform engineering incorporates all of the DevOps practices and and values that we have all right so, so in, a, in a nutshell we can say that devops and platform engineering sort of complement each other where uh platform engineering is like a good strong foundation which sort of makes devops more efficient if that would if that's the right way to put Absol it absolutely you put it absolutely correctly but what you also need to see is for example if you have one team and hmm. um there is no other teams beside you. So you are a startup. Yeah. Then you don't yeah. need to do platform engineering. You just do DevOps. The whole yeah. platform engineering case comes into play yeah. when you have multiple teams and when you have redundancies in, in these teams and when you, when, when you want to get faster and when you want to bring down sort of the costs, then platform engineering is the, the right choice. All right. Again, as you said, it depends on the needs and requirements and uh, the different, you know, the circumstances what the companies are aiming at altogether. Um, I remember in the beginning, uh, somewhere in, in the beginning questions, you mentioned about Docker's, Kubernetes, containers, et cetera, et cetera. And um, if, if we are talking about platform engineering and, you know, we have already spoken about what it is all about, you have covered the why part and as to why should companies embrace that, um, the next question that I think would be apt to ask would be, 
what are the platform engineering tools that you would recommend the companies to adopt mm -hmm. in order to make their working more efficient? But you can see at the moment there there are many tools are coming uh, right now on, on the market for example microsoft um, has just released uh, i think the name is Rad, uh, radiator um, or radiant um, also when you when you look at for example um, openshift this can also be looked at as a platform engineering uh, tool also um, Backstage is is a very good example, and there are many out there um, right now building up these these platforms. I'm pretty sure we will mm -hmm. soon see a, a Gartner quadrant about platform engineering tools, mm -hmm. which which mm -hmm. will will sort of uh, come up. But what you also need to recognize, and that's uh, uh, that's. Uh, that's a, a thing that is very important um, mm. as a company uh, or as a platform engineering team. You need to look at what are the needs for our company, for our product teams. And therefore, you need to carefully uh, look at what you really actually need. Is it sort of a standard platform or is it a custom built platform? that you are going to develop based on other platforms. And here comes a very interesting uh, thing. Uh, usually what, what I see nowadays is that many companies are building platforms on top of platforms. So okay. you have multiple platforms, so stacking on top of mm -hmm. each other to create uh, this, this platform. And there it is very important to identify what kind of capabilities do we need? What kind of capabilities can we borrow from an existing platform mm -hmm. and reuse that, integrate that into uh, sort of our platform and provide mm -hmm. that to, to the teams? All right, got it. So what I understood, like, on one hand, we do have certain standard platforms in drink tools. And on the other hand, we can develop one as well. Absolutely. These are the two possibilities or having no platform. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely that is there. But if we go in for building our own platforms, you know, if there is a way mm -hmm. customizable to work. Um, if we see from, uh, there are two very impromptu questions uh, regarding it. The first one is, um, is there anything security or factor? Does it plays a role if we compare are the platform that we have built and the platform stand platform that we are using? That is the first question. So, like, is, is, is that the case? Like, you know, in our standard one or in the customizable one, you know, the one that we have built secure, it's that that is more secure than the other one. That's a good question. Um, uh, I always uh, think when you are building such a platform, uh, you, you need to do uh, all of the security measures. It, it is a product that you are building internally. So you will need to do all of the pen tests. Uh, you will all, uh, also mm. do all of the security tests, license scanning, uh, SARS, dust. Yeah. Everything need, need, needs mm. to be done with, mm. with that. I think when you are building that for your own, you can absolutely make an absolutely secure platform by mm -hmm. um, building it in a, in a standardized way. This is, uh, mm -hmm. it is, I think it's not a question of uh, security. It's more mm -hmm. a, a question of costs. Yes. I think um, uh, when, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Because building up a such, a such a platform um, will bind, of, of course, money. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you need mm -hmm. to to have money, yeah. but it will also bind some people. Uh, so you need to yeah. invest in, into these people, and the, these people will focus on building such a platform. And uh, you can imagine, you at at least you need to have a, a team of um, mm. let's say five to seven uh, people, um, which are highly skilled. Because when you look at the whole platform engineering, mm -hmm. this is a very tough topic because as i said um, you're going into the direction of application runtime so usually you would build up such a platform on kubernetes so mm. they need to be highly skilled in mm. kubernetes they mm -hmm. need to be highly skilled when it comes to pipelines 
they need to be highly skilled when it comes to security. They need to be highly skilled when it comes to networks. They need yeah. to be highly skilled when it comes to um, sort of backups, all of the IT operation parts. What, uh, mm. what we can clearly see is that you really need highly skilled people with 10 plus um, um, years of experience in developing uh, software. And this mm -hmm. is quite an important point, and this will make it expensive to create okay. your own platform. But it can be absolutely a business case because mm -hmm. you can customize it. Because okay. when you take something off the shelf, it will be mm -hmm. a sort of a, a default. Of course, you will have license, perhaps by use. And mm -hmm. this can also be uh, quite expensive. So there can be a business case of creating a platform. I usually say when you are a company with, let's say, 1,000 developers and you, are, you have a special uh, development, then it absolutely can make sense to create mm -hmm. your own platform. Correct. That was a deep exploration. Actually, it makes so much of sense, right? Um, I just resonated with one of the topics that I um, read a couple of days back, and I could really resonate with what you actually said. Um, that's right. Now that we have spoken too much about uh, platform engineering, and thanks to you for your detailed insights, uh, as we are heading towards the end of the podcast, I think um, it is a good career option that people can um, you know sort of choose this as a good uh, choose platform engineering as a good career option um, but uh, what are the type of skills that one should actually possess to become a platform engineer because I see there are a lot of things according to your explanation because if someone is building the platform on the top of Kubernetes then you should be having knowledge of that then pipeline CI CD etc etc so it's good to take it as a question altogether so that you can just throw some light on it Exactly. So um, uh, what, what you need to see is uh, platform engineering is, is quite a young discipline. Um, yeah. But of course, uh, you, you can go in, in, into this uh, direction and already create value. Mm -hmm. When we look at a platform, then a platform has sort of a user interface for the whole user experience. Usually you will build that or build that on top of something um, like, for example, backstage. So you need to have um, some skills in creating beautiful user um, interfaces. So hmm. also the whole user experience skill is, is also uh, quite a good, a good thing. So front-end hmm. technology. And then mm -hmm. when we are going into the back end, and then mm -hmm. usually uh, what you will have is you will have Docker containers in, in the back end, and of course, potentially a Kubernetes cluster um, in, in the back end. So you need to have Kubernetes uh, know how, you need to con have containerization uh, know how mm -hmm. in there, and also some know how about uh, security. Now, what I see is, that platform engineering is such a big space, you will have different people working on different parts of the platform. So you can easily have people which are working on the user interface. You can easily have people which are working on the network um, topics. You can easily have people which are working on the security park, on the pipeline park, part, um, or then on the Kubernetes part. So usually you have a team um, a diverse team of different people working on, on, on different topics when it comes uh, to, to, a, to a platform. So the right. platform engineer, when, when hmm. you, because your question is going into this direction, what is sort of the platform engineer? I mean, hmm. when you want to have sort of the default profile of a platform engineer, then in hmm. my opinion, it is someone um, that has knowledge in Kubernetes, quite broad mm -hmm. knowledge in Kubernetes, has also some knowledge about user interfaces and um, knows how, um, how software development works. So has um, knows the customer because the customer is software engineering teams and also needs to have some knowledge about pipelines and uh, about how to automate things. That is right. That, that's right. And this 
this shows that uh, platform engineers um, would, would definitely have a very crucial role because they have been they would have to have knowledge in you know these different departments altogether, you know the different technical stacks. That is true. All right, I, we have reached towards the um, end of the episode, and it was so insightful, educative, and informative. Um, it, it, we literally started right from scratch, and uh, thanks to you for such. Um, such such in-depth insights on this topic thank you so much romano once again and um do you want to say any signing off note uh yeah it, it was absolutely fantastic <laughs> um thanks uh, for organizing that and uh, thanks for all of these amazing uh, questions that you brought up it was uh, really uh, nice uh, to 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 talk uh, with you and uh, share the knowledge uh, with you yeah so thank you very much Likewise, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to have you on the podcast. And um, I myself got to learn so much from you, from such an experienced professional like you. So thank you so much once again. Thank you.